to take some time out now to talk about the service provider side of Shibboleth. This is the other half of the Shibboleth software, the other half of the equation. And generally speaking, service providers are currently using version 2.11 of the software. Shibboleth is used to protect web resources, so if you actually need an authentication to get into a web resource that's particularly valuable, then it's an idea to use Shibboleth to protect that web resource. Also, the software sets out the requirement for which attributes are required so that offerings can actually be quite granular. What we mean by this is if you've got students that are fairly advanced on their courses and require more detailed resources, you might set that you require further attribute information to actually get to those resources. A typical example is medical resources. If you've got like a biology student who's doing a, uh, an introductory course, they don't need quite just granular uh, resources as would do some other degree course or whatever. The attribute release policies uh, used are quite different uh, to provide the service to users. Resources licensed to all members of the organisation for the service provider only need to know the edgy person's scoped affiliation and possibly the education, edgy person targeted ID to allow the users to store preferences. More fine grained authentication or login requirements may require more attributes than these aren't set at the moment. Service providers are recommended to publish which attributes they require so that identity providers can quickly identify the correct uh, attribute release policy configuration. This is most important and these are usually listed on the UK Federation website so we recommend that uh, if librarians are having difficulty matching these two up, they refer to the UK Federation website to look at what attributes are actually required by the service provider. However, uh, identity providers should be cautious about releasing attributes, attributes and challenge service provider requirements that don't seem to be necessary. So quite an important point there if you think something is not quite right. Of course, you may refer to the UK Federation and its help desk further information or guidance on this point. For service provider technical notes, as it's Apache uh, or IIS, it will run on all major platforms such as Windows, Linux or uh, again Macintosh. It, uh, as it uses HTTPS, it's most important to identify that virtual hosting won't really work unless you're using the service name indication. Usually at HTTPS uses one IP address to one web resource. If you're trying to use virtual hosting in Apache, for example, this usually causes a conflict and the software is usually confused. So you're best off having one IP address per host that you're trying to get access to. Another point as well about commercial digital certificates. These must be used on the UK Federation site as opposed to Janet customers who get their digital certificates for free. Commercial providers generally uh, tend to provide, have to provide commercial digital certificates, and it can be quite a lengthy process to get the correct one, which is uh, required by the UK Federation. So please, again, refer to the UK Federation website for further guidance.